Hey, it's MK and I am doing Mixed Media Mayhem and today we are scrap lifting another Angelica De Bruin layout. I loved this layout and had a blast creating it and taking it from a monotone into a uh, rainbow actually, which I don't hardly ever do. So I'm super excited. So I have my kit conspiracy kit and I included um, these rings from Creative Memories. I also pulled out these stamps. Um, I have no idea where they came from, you guys. I'm sorry. I'm being honest. Um, but so many stamps come in kits these days that I can't hardly keep up. I don't know if this is a not just for boys stamp. I don't know if it's a bow bunny stamp. I don't know. I also have this brand new to me thinlets from Tim Holtz that I plan on using this rainbow color um, with to try them out. I've got a couple inks and things to use with my stencil. Now this was January 2023's stencil um, that I had Sandy cut for my um, for my boxes, and I'm not sure which ink I'm going to use. Now, I really liked this old paper and I really loved this smoothie. So the smoothie actually went with the coral color up in the, uh, I don't know, rainbow palette. And then the old paper was more like the darker yellow. I was really looking for the mint though, you guys. So I'm still trying to find it. I also have this really cool needle and thread set that was gifted to me by Kathy Carr. Thank you so very much. And then I picked out all the black elements, including these uh, bright, fun fan stars and good vibes um, little ringy thingies. And then of course I have two pictures of the group at Walnut Grove at one time because there's two different groups that I go and join. And so this was one of them, I, I believe the April group, April or May group. And then I'm also going to take the leftovers after cutting my uh, letters and using my rings to cut out circles. And then for my photo mats, I'm going to use these uh, or this <laughs> sketchy paper, I don't know, the dashed line paper, and I want to make a Polaroid just like what Angelica did on hers. So here we go. Let's start going, and I have a white background to play with. Now I'm going to be a spoiler and let you know that my first attempt at this layout did not work. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but I'm going to take the good times and this is what takes the longest is because I really, really, really did want to do the whole wrapping the string around the letters thing. I really did want to do that. Well, when I was pulling out this alpha set, I realized this isn't just a solid alpha. This alpha actually comes with an outline and, um, in my brain, I'm trying to think of how that's going to look. Like, I don't understand, is it going to be an embossed outline? Is it gonna be a cut outline? Is it gonna be a solid? I don't, I can't wrap my head around it until I cut it for the first time. So I decided right then and there that I'm going to cut it in black as well because if it's not gonna be a solid outline, then I have a black. So it doesn't end up cutting out. I do end up having a, an outline and a solid. I could have definitely just went with the solid, but I do really like the black. So what I decided to do was wrap this twine around, which matched the darkest blue or blue green teal aqua color um, in, the, uh, in, the, in the color swatch paper, the rainbow paper. And so I wrapped all of my thread with the same twine. I noticed Angelica used uh, almost like a variegated color. So she went from light to dark, back to dark, um, back to light. <laughs> <laughs> however that works. And I uh, I did not end up um, doing that. I just wrapped it with the exact same color all the way down. And I really do like this effect. It was a pill to do. Um, I'm not going to lie. It wasn't my favorite thing to do, but I do like the effect. Um, and then I decided since the thread actually makes a lump in my alphas, I'm going to go ahead and take the negative from my black cardstock and pop it up on foam to give it a little bit of interest and lift. And I also think that um, Angelica popped hers up on foam as well. So I'm gonna do uh, my my outline flat on the on the layout, and then my title, my letters popped up on foam, but they're gonna be popped up on the black portion so that way I can still move them around and get them where I want them before I commit, right? So I shared with you guys how I put on this uh, twine all the way around. My M was pretty cute and all lonely. So I decided to put two strings on. One was just a cute little tie and then the other one was the wrap. Um, and then my uh, D, I wanted to do the same thing that um, Angelica did on her D and it was kind of wrap it around the, um, uh, around the corner 
And so I went ahead and I did that on my D. And yeah, I tried to make it go up and down and up and down all the way across. My O is upside down at this time, but I do fix it, I promise. Um, and then I did not make you guys watch uh, me putting all this foam on and putting it all together because it was just a nightmare. I'm sorry. <laughs> It was very time consuming. Um, so I show you how I do one and then I move on. But I ended up using an acrylic block to hold all my pieces down. And once I am done, then I set them off to the side so I can work on my background finally. Holy cow. Yes, the title took forever. Not going to lie. So I cut out um, taking my pictures and cutting them down and also cutting down the... Um, the frames because I forgot to zoom out. Well, then I went to go zoom back in to show you my stitching because Angelica does three crosses, three X's down the side of her photo. And I thought, oh my gosh, I really do like that. So I'm going to do that as well using my same thread and then the needle that Kathy included in the cute little kit that she put together for us. So I went ahead and I zoomed it back in and realized, oh my gosh, I did all that cutting without having the camera zoomed back in. So uh, yeah, so I just cut it all out. Plus, it's the same old thing, you guys. I cut my photos down and then I measure it either um, a quarter of an inch larger or an eighth of an inch larger, depending on how big of a photo mat I want. Um, but those are usually my two go-to sizes. And I went and did both of my photos since I'm doing two with that um, with that cross look. I love this, you guys. And I did hand do it. Um, I didn't use a ruler or anything. So my X's aren't perfect, but that's fine. It still goes with the theme that I'm going for. All right, so now I'm going to decide how big do I want my largest circle based off of my photo cluster, which I've already glued together. And I want to use this... Uh, I want to use up this um, this rainbow paper and I want my circles to flow down in the color of the rainbow. So that's what I'm trying to do. And based off of the circles that Angelica uses, that's where I was going with um, for this uh, particular app exercise. So I wanted my colors to flow down my photos in the rainbow call in the rainbow order, but then also follow along with um, she's got a large one, a couple medium ones, a couple small ones, and then a couple micro ones. Um, I do end up changing my marbles uh, at the end because the small ones weren't really small. like they needed to be even more small. So I end up actually bringing a punch out for that because it's so hard for me to judge how small these circles are going to come out. And I'm too lazy to pull out that little cheat sheet that Creative Memories actually included. So here's my little punch that I am bringing out. I did... <laughs> I was missing a punch in the color that I needed it, so I knew I was going to have a circle behind one of the photos, so I used that to make another punch. <laughs> I kind of am a cheater. And then what I end up doing later is putting together my circles and then tracing out on my paper so that way I know where my mixed media is going to go. And the longer that you look, I love these types of layouts, by the way, the longer that you look at Angelica's layout, the more you see. And I am just fascinated by these types of layouts. I love looking at these. It's almost like watching your favorite show. And then for the first time, you watch it really fast. You, you pay attention and you think you saw every little detail. And then you watch it for the fifth time and you realize, I don't remember that. Like I've seen this five times and I don't remember that. It is just so cool. So uh, I am taking all of my pieces and I'm going to glue them to each other. So that way I am able to actually um, outline the whole thing and then be able to move it back and forth. Because when I do an outline, I don't want to outline every single thing and then put it down like a puzzle. I don't want to do that. I, I really just want everything to be where it belongs and just do one solid outline around the whole thing for my mixed media. And uh, I've said this before, but one of the reasons why I do this is because I really don't want to put all that hard work into the background to find out that my cluster or all of the elements I want are too small. Um, and they just end up um, or they're, I'm sorry, they're too large and they end up getting covering up all that hard work. Um, so I, I cheat and I take out the, uh, the guesswork and I draw my outlines and um, end up getting it to where I can see um, where all my, you know, where my elements need to be. And it's always bigger 
<laughs> it always ends up being bigger than where I would have originally put them. All right, so looking for my pencil. And I'm finally ready to do an outline. One of my circles was crooked. That's okay. So, and I do apologize about the shadowing. So my shadowing isn't meant for me to be a stand-up scrapbooker. But back in the day, I was a stand-up scrapbooker. And slowly but surely, I have... I stand up for some things when I'm not recording. I sit down for other things. But um, sometimes I'm so busy that I need to move around my room to where I'm standing up more at my scrap table because I am just going to walk away here in a heartbeat, right? So I end up just standing up and my lighting isn't meant for me to be doing that. And so I have these weird shadows and I apologize about that. So the first color, oh my gosh, oh, Happy just brought me coffee. Thank you. <laughs> uh, my first color of this smoothie was perfect. It was a beautiful match. I absolutely loved it. But then I brought in old paper and I thought, oh, I don't like that. Let me try it again in oxide. Maybe it's a different shade of old paper. Nope, that's worse. I don't like that at all. I really did like this one, but it's not the color. I really wanted mint. So I went with speckled egg, which Oddly enough, was my first color choice, but for some reason, my swatch told me no. My swatch said, no, that's not, that's not the color you're looking for. But then when I used it, it was the color I was looking for. So I should always go with my first instinct, but I, I, I always second guess myself every time. So now I picked out, this is the first attempt at stamping, and I went with black because I wanted a nice, bold stamp. And here I go. I already don't like it, but I keep going because sometimes when I don't like it and I keep going, I like it, right? Well, here's why I don't like it is because I really liked my stenciling and I'm covering it up with these big, black, bold stamps and I don't like it. And I'm still stamping going, nope, I don't like it. There's not enough variation in the stamps. They're all the same size. They're all the same um, dark, darkness. They, uh, nope, I don't like it. Well, then I brought out another stamp and I thought, you know what? I can't make it any worse, but I'm going to try off stamping. Do I like it in gray better? And I do. Um, this stamp here was just, uh, I wanted a, a sprinkle of something. I, I didn't really want to bring in another shape, but, um, I did want to have a sprinkle of something. And then I picked out, I realized that she had words, um, word stamps and I did not so I had to pick out this one here that is from 49 and market I didn't like that either um, and and as you can see my stenciling is disappearing like all over the place it is completely almost gone um, especially in the two corners so I'm going to flip over and start over again uh, thank gosh there are two sides to every paper right I love that and because I didn't use a wet medium, I am able to just flip it over instead of starting anew and uh, doing it all over again. So I don't like my stenciling as much as I liked the first stenciling because now I feel like I'm trying too hard, uh, but uh, I, I'm, I'm going to keep going and I'm stenciling from the, from the wrong side of my, my pencil line out because I don't want the stencil to be too dark, if that makes any sense. And then here I'm stenciling from the edge of the paper in, if that makes any sense. So that way, and then of course it's not dark enough. I went a little too light. I didn't want it to be too dark. I didn't want it to be a, hey, look, I'm here. Um, so that one turned out a little on the light side, but I felt like I was moving my stencil and I was going to get a double print. I didn't want that. Um, and off camera, I am cleaning the ink off of my stencil because I definitely don't want to make an ugly color. Um, if this was just a a background that wasn't, go, you know, that was mostly going to be covered up, I wouldn't have minded the two shades blending and getting a purpley color. But in this case, I opted that I that that wasn't what I was going for. So I really wanted to color match. Now for here, I went back to my uh, wordy stamp that was from 49 and Market. And I started stamping it. But this time I'm stamping in black and then stamping off and then stamping. And I really like the gray. I mean, yes, I do have a gray ink pad. I definitely could have done this, but it's not the same. It wouldn't have been that black gray. It would have probably been a purpley gray or a brownish gray or not the gray I was 
I was looking for. Um, so this is what I ended up doing. I do end up stamping the love this in black, black. Um, and then I stamp it a couple more times off. Um, so I have a second generation stamp, but you're not even going to be able to read what it says because it's it's underneath some of it's tucked in and, and around and, and shifted throughout the um, stenciling work. So and for my um, for my rings, I stamped off and I didn't like that. Um, so my rings are going to be a solid black as well. And I only do three of them um, to bring them to bring them in and and add a little bit more of the circular element to my layout. And this is another stitching set that I got from somewhere. I wish I knew where, uh, but I don't. I didn't. I I briefly showed it to you guys, but I I don't think that it has the name or anything. Again, I think it's a Bow Bunny stamp set. Um, I'm not really familiar, but the stamps tell me that it's it might possibly be Bow Bunny. It it's just the different material that they use um, that makes me feel like it's it's their stamp. If that makes sense, um, it's not the same as. It, the the clear stamps aren't there's I don't know they're they're not the same um plus one stamp keeps falling off the case and that drives me nuts all right so I'm going to bring in these um uh, well they're kind of arrows but it's a whole section of arrows and I only wanted one set and so I'm just using my scrap paper to help me mask off the rest um and and only get my one uh row of little arrows that I wanted or chevrons or whatever they are um, so yes, I, I just used my masking and then I needed squares, um, but I didn't have any squares. So I, I went with dots because, hey, I've got circles all over my layout. And I pulled out this Tim Holtz one because it was the only small circle dot that I owned. Um, but I'm not doing the target um, image. I am just doing the four little dots um, and scattering them around and I am trying my hardest and I don't know why but I am trying my hardest to put them in the exact same spot that Angelica used her squares I mean I really really tried to completely copy this but I went with um, a colorful layout instead of a monochromatic layout and I was super excited with this I love the fact that um, my pink is on my pink side. My blue matches my blue side. I just really, really do love this. Um, I'm popping up the smaller circles rather than um, uh, just leaving them flat. So that way I give it a little bit more of an interest to the layout. I love this. I love how it looks. I'm so super happy. And then I put the title down and I realize, oh my gosh, I should have did the title the opposite direction. That way it goes from pink to green. Ah, that's terrible. Oh my gosh. Um, so at first I was like, oh, I don't like it. Nope, I don't. But then I started looking at it and staring at it and it's like, you know what? This wasn't intentional. Like I didn't intend to do two different colors of stenciling in the first place. It just happened that way. So it's okay if the title's not intentionally going the way it's supposed to go. So I went ahead and I glued it on anyways. I love the color of this, I don't do very many rainbow layouts. I don't do very many colorful layouts. So I'm just going with it. I really am. Um, I've already messed up once <laughs> on this layout. So I'm just, yep, yeah, it's, we're winging it from now on. It It's just a wingy thingy um, that I am just going to go with. Uh, I did flip my, um, my O around so that way all of the grid matches on the words. And I do have to say that I cut out the colorful um, the colorful alphas as well as the black alphas at the same time. And I didn't run it through twice. So some of the letters did not cut all the way through and that's why they're still attached to the outline where some of them I'm actually having to add the outline and the inner bits. Um, but it just was a cutting thing. It didn't cut all the way through and I, I didn't realize that um, I was going to have to cut it through twice. Um, so yeah, I just it was just one of those things where I did not end up doing that. Not one bit. All right going to finish gluing all these down. I left this down here um, just because of the fact that some people might ask why or how um, you glue 
the, the really, really skinny bits down. And truth be told, I, because they were already attached to some of uh, the base pieces or the solid pieces, um, I didn't really have a whole lot to glue as far as the outline went. Um, I think the G and the D were the only ones that I had to, and it was just a teeny tiny little dot, dot, dot type of thing. Um, and then I dabbed off the extra glue that um, I knew was going to seep out. So that was how I glued it all down. All right, finishing off, holy cow, I didn't realize this was going to take so long, but I am going to finish this off. I'm using a Take Your Pick tool by, Stamp, uh, by Stampin' Up. And currently, the part that has the little sticky bit to pick up sequins and stuff, um, it fell out. So it must have fallen, it must have come unscrewed in my, um, in my, my tool caddy. And so I, I just have to go get it. I apologize. Um, but if it looks weird, that's what it is. Oh, it doesn't say good vibes. It says awesome in there. Uh, I really did like the star with the burst behind it. So we're going to end up using that. But this one that says awesome doesn't find a home. I don't end up liking it. Um, I do end up liking the happy thoughts. I did cover up one of my circles that um, was originally there with my star just to give it a, some lift. That was not um, planned at all, but that's where it went. I have a tab, which was actually a journaling spot, but I turned it into a tab that says recorded. Um, I've got a nice little journaling spot, but all I'm going to basically be journaling about was that this was um, our location and the year of when we went. And then down, to, um, down it says favorite photo. So good times, favorite photo. Um, I love our goofy photos. I really do. I like our serious photos, but I love the goofy photos more um, just because it, you get to see some personality. You get to see that it well, it looks like we're having fun. <laughs> it's, would that be called staged fun? So anyways, that is my layout for today. I do love the difference in the black inks. I like the gray uh, or the gray. I like the black. I like how it looks now. Um, it's so much better than what I was going for on the first layout. I love the stenciling in the background. Um, I just really had a blast making this layout and turning it into such a colorful um, display. All right, you guys. So don't forget to check out all of the other mixed media gals. Uh, they actually played yesterday and I didn't realize that I didn't have a video. So that was my bad. Um, but go check out the links down below, the playlist link, the Facebook link, the album link. Um, depending on what your clicking choice and preferences are. Angelica, thank you so much for allowing us to lift you today. And um, also don't forget to check out the Facebook group for Kit Conspiracy to see how everyone else is using their kit along with Janet Fritz's channel, who is Galaxy Girl Creations. She's been playing along with this kit all week long, just like I have. So it's been super, super fun. So anyways, thank you so much and I'll check y'all later. Bye.